Today on episode 133 of Typical Chicago Fans, we have Sinkers and Floaters, TCF Sports Minute, our pick threes of the week, our NBA playoff preview, and the TCF not top three, the worst Major League Baseball logos. Let's roll. Hello and welcome back to Typical Chicago Fans. It is episode 133 brought to you by our incredible sponsor, Connect Roasters Coffee. Make sure to check us out on Twitter at typical underscore Chicago, Facebook and Instagram. Type in typical Chicago fans. Give those pages a like. Head over to YouTube. Check out our YouTube page for all of our content in video form. Uh, Wherever you get your podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, doesn't matter. Wherever you get podcasts, we are there. Uh, But you can follow Zach on Twitter at ZLilia, TCF, Maddie at schools underscore zero one. And you can follow me at Boomy TCF. Boys, of course, we always talk about the weather. This might have been the nicest day of the year so far today. It's finally starting to feel like it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was like 70 degrees. I went golfing. I wore shorts. I wore short sleeves. Uh, It got a little cold at the end. But... I know maybe tomorrow is going to suck, but today was beautiful. Absolutely. I'll take this every – if it could be today's weather for 365 days, I would pay an absorbent amount of money. <laughs> I just want to give you a heads up on the forecast real quick. There's Saturday, no need to do that, Daddy. Saturday, 82, high of 82. Oh. Next Tuesday, oh. high of 47. Welcome to oh, yeah, it sounds, like, it it sounds like Illinois to me. That sounds Absolutely like Illinois insane. to me. It's absolutely insane. And that, but hey, at least Saturday they're not calling for rain, at least during the day. So maybe it may be Saturday night, but it's got a nice day coming Saturday. Be a hot one. Well, I was excited for a little bit, but 47 don't sound yeah. as good as 82 Man, or 83. It's, sad. it's just like fucking <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do about this shit? It's ridiculous. It, Exactly. We live where we live, man. But let's get into it. As always, sinkers and floaters. My sinker is something that I love a lot. And my sinker is bat flips. Um, I love bat flips, but you better be careful who you bat flip nowadays. uh, Because there was a junior college game going on in the state of Texas. Um, North Central Texas College uh, was playing. That sounds made uh, up. Yeah, I yeah, that's a South Harmon Institute of Technology place if I've ever heard heard one. Um, but they were playing in a game. Kid throws a pitch, gives up a home run. Kid's rounding the base, gets to third base before he takes his second step. The pitcher who was on a B line for him absolutely cleared him, uh, decleated him, just speared him into the ground, and a giant brawl broke out. Um, he is facing a suspension. I believe he suspended four games, which I thought was really light. He's actually been um, kicked off his team. I'm pretty much. I'm pretty sure. Uh, last I had seen on on Twitter, it was only a four game suspension. No, he but, has. Uh, I'm pretty sure been kicked off his team. Well, as he should. You can't tackle. I mean, he should be kicked off the team and recruited by the football team there because that was a textbook tackle. But you can't do that in baseball. No, you cannot do that. <laughs> And, but it was one of those things that I've you, definitely felt the desire to do that. Not gonna lie. Oh, absolutely. I have definitely. I've never pitched in high school, but if you give up a home run, I think anyone yeah, I, would love to do I, that. I, I pitched in high school, gave up an absolute fucking rocket to kid from Plano, and obviously <laughs> being from San Francisco is not a good thing. This kid was a fucker too, so. Yeah, that one stung. That would have been one I would have fucking definitely liked to de <laughs> with a spear. No question about it. A uh, kid that did the spearing was a pitcher from Weatherford College, uh, Owen Woodward. Um, and uh, if you've seen the video, it's been going around. But, man, he was on a full sprint. And it he, he, he took him pretty – I mean, the kid's helmet went flying. Um, but, yeah, you, you got to be careful who you're flipping your bat against nowadays if people are going to start – Spear and guys coming around third base. So you got to be careful out there. Definitely have to be more careful than that because, first of all, you don't know who's crazy. Yeah, that's true. That's what I have to say. Um, Boys, my sinker is wind. Wind is – you have, like, beautiful days, and then it's, like, 25-mile-per-hour winds. I am tired of the wind. I know this time of year um, it's – you get, like – whatever weather and it's windy 
the wind just it, it absolutely pisses me off. That is one of the downfalls. About it. And luckily, like, you know, we get this one day and we're here raving about it because it was so nice. There wasn't a ton of wind. But, man, it's it feels like if we're going to get no rain or, you know, no cold, then there's been wind every day. So uh, especially, you know, this time of year when you're trying to get out, whether it's disc golf, golf, you know, go out and do anything, man. It's it's not easy with, with these 20 to 30 mile an hour wind days. No, it's just like it's you go, oh, it's nice outside. And then even you because I live in town. You don't really notice the wind, and you go to work, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is just nuts. <laughs> yeah, not fun at all. Uh, Maddie, have you had troubles with the wind uh, whipping the yard apart? I know it's about you know yeah, lawn garden, lawn and garden branches season. everywhere right now. Yes, uh, every every two hours you go out there, there's a new pile of sticks to pick up. Fortunately, Owen got a uh, like a, one of those power wheels. It's a John Deere tractor with a trailer. So he goes around in the backyard, and picks up the sticks, and throws them in his trailer. So it's perfect. <laughs> Does so, he? Yeah. Fucking. Beautiful. Is he available for hire? Because I've got like a half a tree well, out in no, that back here. He's doing so. it for me for free. I'm not going to sell them out to anybody. <laughs> well, if you if Maddie, you decide, uh, also you, you could charge you could charge yeah. me a hefty price though. Yeah, it's like, dude, you got like free landscape work. It's it's beautiful. <laughs> I respect it. Uh boys, my sinker is uh <laughs> it's not the de- it's the dentist, but not only just it's a specific dentist incident and I don't know if you guys heard about this. Oh one. no. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, an Illinois an Illinois man uh went to the dentist and uh somehow inhaled the dentist's drill bit. Um and it couldn't be removed. Like, it was so far into his lungs, they couldn't get it with, like, normal tools. So this guy had to go to the hospital to have it actually, like, they had to, like, go in, like, and sculpt into his lung to be able to pull it out. It was pretty, uh, oh my God. pretty risky procedure, actually, yeah. to get this one-inch long drill bit that this guy <sighs> somehow sucked down while he was at the dentist, and he was passed out. So, um but yeah, got got to keep the drill. But he said it's sitting on his like a like on like on a shelf in his living room as like a yeah. trophy. I mean, kind Dude, of a this fucking is... savage move, I guess. But okay, I so I was... one more reason just to not go to the dentist. You're gonna end up with a fucking drill bit in your lungs. That just doesn't oh, yeah. sound like a good thing. Not gonna okay, so you guys, I, I've told my story here about my all my trips to the dentist after ten years off. So this is like a year ago, and I was in the dentist chair doing so. It might have been a cavity filling, whatever. But the girl, um, like the end of, I think she was holding like this, the like suction thing or whatever, but whatever it was, it was a heavy piece of metal and like it attached to like the normal drill. Well, it fell out and like hit me in, like landed in my mouth, but it like <laughs> smoked me in the lip. Like that hurts so bad. I couldn't imagine oh, I like. It just that like piece of metal. It fell from like uh, probably eight inches above my face, like right into my mouth, almost down my throat, and smoked me in the lip. Thank God I wasn't this guy because I wasn't too far off. That, Imagine that's, that's just got to be like you wake up, you're rich, Boomy. You wake up yeah. like at the dentist, thinking, "All right, it's, this was how I just went through hell," and you, the fucking dentist is looking at you like, "Yeah, you just swallowed my drill bit." Like that. Or he, takes, the dentist is looking around. He's like, "Where?" Did I put? I would have to be like David after Dennis high level to be able to like right? get get to the point where I could you know tolerate that situation. I'd have to I be in, think, in the. I don't office. think I could ever. I would have to be in the clouds to not like go ballistic on that dentist. I'm not gonna lie. Some edibles. Edibles, the gas, all of it, every bit of it, anything that could put me into a different element because I would be irate. A rubber hammer. <laughs> That's about it. Um, let's move on to our floaters. And my floater is golf season. I know we talked about it quite a bit here. Uh, but uh, that is because there are uh, 63 golf cart owners that have kind of come around here. Uh, because a man in Fargo, North Dakota, um, was linked to dozens of motorized golf cart thefts in the upper Midwest. He was caught and sentenced to two years in federal prison. And it wasn't just a couple golf carts. It was 63 golf carts in seven states worth $283,000 this guy had stolen. First of all, 
Where are you First, keeping 63 stolen golf carts? I'm Second of all, why? I think he should be rewarded for this. If, he, if, if, no, if he's getting away with this, it's like, good on you. We don't condone oh. theft here. I'm oh, curious I how he's doing that. Uh, he, he also he, didn't get away with it. He's going to the federal prison for two years. I'm, I'm curious he how was he getting away how, with it, like, though. how he executed this. Is that it? I... I didn't get too deep into it, but like, he did, he have, so a, did it, he have a trailer and he just drove it right up when he was at the golf course and boom, see you later. Just take all right, so a time. From the AP, it says Nelson would typically steal carts in pairs from rural, rural Midwestern golf yeah. courses at night. He sold many of the carts under the alias Mason Weber at a cost of $2,500 each. Um, so yeah, he was just taking them in the middle of the night, putting them on his car and sell, turn around and selling them. So I mean, I, I can see how it works. He got away with it for a a time, a, a period of time. I mean, and like you could see, it's kind of like the office space mentality where you're just taking like a fraction of a penny. You, you're yeah. only taking one golf cart from one place and then one golf cart from another place. It's like, are they doing inventory on their 60 golf carts that are sitting out in the parking lot every night? You know what I mean? Like, I gotta feel like that wouldn't be that difficult to pinch one or two every now and then. Not a it's bad also idea. a little bit different when the thing weighs five hundred pounds. It's true. I think you need one of those like covered trailers, like those trailers that people like haul like yeah. landscape equipment in and shit like that. Drive it right up no. the ramp and see you later. <laughs> in and out of there. Work for a little seconds. bit. I think they there made a goes. movie about that. My floater is yard work. This time of year, it's all it's what you think about. You think about I got to get the yard mode for the first time, rolled for the first time. You got to go out put mulch or whatever if you live in town. Uh, yard work is just something that I've learned. I think I've lived in this house for like two years now, three years maybe. Um, that you have to make sure everything looks good or whatever. Um, I, I'm actually trying to get rid of some trees just so I don't have to worry about anything like that. I have a tree. It's like a cherry tree or whatever. And it just stains my driveway. All it does is stain my yeah. driveway. I don't, the cherries are dumb. Um, they're not the even like good eating cherries. No. Oh no. I would never eat them. <laughs> no, it is that time of year. I got the, uh, I think I talked about it last summer. I got a new uh, Z-Turn mower, and I got that baby taken in, tuned up. She's ready to roll. I actually had all of the intention to mow uh, this past Monday, and then it snowed Sunday night. So um, I'm all I'm all gearing up and ready to get the yard mowed for the first time. Let's go. I um I have to get this done yeah, at least sometime this weekend because uh, one part of my yard is super long, and then the other part yeah. is not. Same here, man. I'm with you. Maddie, what's your floater for the week? Mine is uh, name, image, and likeness in college basketball has probably saved that sport. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe not saved it, I shouldn't say, but has maybe uh, resuscitated it or given it a nice big injection because we got, like, potential national player of the year is coming back. Oscar Toshiboy is coming back. Jaime Hawkins is coming back. My man Armando Baycott's coming back. Still Huge. waiting on Caleb Love. It'd be nice if he comes back too. That whole team would be back. Um, it'd be really nice there. Um, but no, man, like those guys are making two, three million dollars a year and just like random deals for businesses in their college towns. They're going to make more doing that than they are fledgling away on some fucking uh, G League team or the back of an NBA roster as a second round pick. So you might as well get the free education, get your degree, make way more money, and keep playing ball with, you know, with. A lot That's less so pressure. true to think about, like, guys are like, oh, I have to go to the awesome. league to make money for my family. Well, I could stay here, have a little fun, and still make a decent amount of money. I mean, as much as people want to bitch about the transfer portal and all of it, it's like college basketball has now become. I think the transfer portal like, is as fair as it can be because if a coach can leave a team like they do, what's the difference with a player doing the same thing? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. And the player's definitely not getting paid as much money. Right. Yeah. No, I think it's it's big. Um, you know, it's – First off, the thing that... I just want to say 
congratulations to Duke University, John Shire, Coach K's grandson, in the transfer portal. I did see that. They're cleaning up the mess. That. They're cleaning up the um, mess. Maddie, all those guys that you named, <laughs> and, and when you say, you know, that these guys get their education and they make, you know, it, it, we, even if it's a million dollars off of some of these, these so deals. Maybe you make a half a million or a quarter yeah. million, a hundred thousand dollars as a college kid for a, for a year of signing your name or putting your face on some t-shirts or something. You know what I mean? Like, yep. And not even that, Maddie. I mean, all those guys you named have as good a chance as anybody to win a national title or be playing in a final four. So oh, yeah. it, it's going to be big for, like you said, the retention in the game of college hoops is, is going to be big with, with the NIL deals. Because I think it's what we finally have to forget about is the days of pretending like these kids who are in the national spotlight winning big games are this these kids that are just going to be normal kids on campus. No, these guys should be making a good amount of money, just as much money as the university is making. There's incentive for these guys to stay. And yeah, I, it's, I'm it's sorry, like just like – a, a reason, a, a boilerplate, random degree that in a, in a field that doesn't necessarily matter doesn't hold the weight that it could, like yeah. like that it just flat out money. That's like for a lot of these mm -hmm. guys. So, I mean, now that they, there's a a, a carrot that they can kind of go out and get, like yeah, and now they can get, you now they can reap the rest of the benefits of of their college education. Then. Absolutely. It's, Huge it's for a college perfect hoops. setup at this point. Like, if you're if you're a D one athlete, like you got basically got the world by your balls right now. Because you Perfect. remember when uh, Myers Leonard, he wanted to go to the mm -hmm. league because he needed to get the money. Imagine if he could have had a, a decent amount of money from like an NIL deal, and he could have stayed at think uh, about Illinois for Tebow. one more year. Think about what Tim how could they could have been? made in college? Oh, that's but, yeah. But uh, but. Tim Tebow already had a decent amount of money. No, I know. What I'm I, just saying. But no, think what about I mean what is some like of those guys would have made. Guys like who, Cam Newton. Yeah, well, Cam Newton. He made a good amount of money, anyways. The USC uh, crew, Bush, Liner, all those guys. Yeah. They would have been breaking in dough, dude. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> even uh, like guys like even uh, guys like D Brown, like them, they yeah, could have oh, yeah. made so much money off of just that. Absolutely changes the landscape for sure, which I think is a good thing. I did, you know, oh, we're yeah. lovers of college awesome. hoops here, so and let's keep it rolling. It's, it's it gonna better. keep some kids in college maybe a little bit longer and make it a little more interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. I just think, too, like, I mean, a guy like Armando Baycott, like playing four years, and it, it that's good for, you know, that's North good for Carolina. college basketball, it's good for college basketball, but like, because, that's the kind of guy that you could end up seeing as a coach down the line, you know, it's got I four understand. years. And, in the NCAA, he's going to play five to ten years in the NBA, probably, and you know he's going to just he's going to have an entire future in the sport because of it. Well, I understand. Yes, there's some players who can go straight to the league or whatever, 19, yeah. 20 years old. But there's also some players who should maybe go until they're 21, 22 to college. Like there's it's going to make the NBA better too because you're going to be getting mm -hmm. players that are ready to play. Yeah, who are more ready to play. Couldn't agree more, fellas. Uh, let's jump in to the TCF Sports Minute. Uh, we got to start off with the Bulls, of course. Uh, they are in the Eastern Conference let's playoffs. Oh, yes. Series is tied. Uh, dropped the first one, 93 to 86. Big bounce back win in game two, 114 to 110. Um, and now Chris Middleton is out for at least the rest of the series, probably more. Um, guys, I. I don't know if I'd have said this after game one, but this team has a realistic chance to make this a series, which I did not think a week ago. I didn't think it'd be – I was hoping they could win one. And now you look at it and it's like, okay, no Middleton. Uh, you know, you got some guys playing well. Uh, DeRozan showed what he could do in game two. Uh, you know, it's not inexplainable or, you know, crazy to think that this team could push it six, seven games. Levine, Fusevich, DeMar, DeRozan. Combined for 85 of the 114 points. They said they were going to step up and they were going to play a lot better. Uh, DeMar had 41 points, which is his career high in the playoffs. Uh, it's fun to watch. And, yes, you hate to see a guy like Middleton go out. You don't want to see something like that happen. But that's what has to happen for a team like the Bulls to win a series. 
And yes, it sucks. And I you you don't want to win a series that way, but that's how the playoffs go. Because guess what? What were people saying when Derrick Rose went down with a torn a- ACL? Like, yep. yes, I, I I'm so I, I it sucks that it happens, but it, it's also and now an advantage for the Bulls. And now they're back home, one one. They got two games at the United Center, and I I couldn't be more excited. For tonight, they play, was it 730? The United Center is going to be wild. And it's going to be exciting because there is a chance this team could win this series now. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen, man. And now, especially like we said with Middleton, who knows? Maddie, do you think the Bulls, I mean, are we being realistic here? Are we just getting excited? Am I being crazy? I mean, I think they they had every right to win game one. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they were. They, they they should have won game one. They very well could have, um, at the very least. And uh, you, they were in charge of game two the entire – from start to finish, basically. I mean, they were I – mean, they, they you know, what, what was it, late in the third, early in the fourth? It kind of got close again, but then the Bulls pulled away again really quick. He just got back up at double digits, like, you know, another quick run. DeMar DeRozan going to play like that, dude. I don't, I don't know. I, I think anything can happen at that point. And, like – and frankly, the NBA you saw last year in the playoffs, like guys got hurt, like in a, to an insane level last year. It and sucks, I'm not saying that's what, that's what I want to happen, but no. it's you. Anything can happen. Look what Phoenix is now facing with the uh, you know with Booker Devin out. Booker for out for the series two to three weeks. You know, like all of a sudden that that series is flipped, and you know you could say that about like it's. I don't know it. Just keep, just keep grinding. That's all I want. Yes. Just keep, you know, keep, keep leaning on this team. This team can be beat. They're not like a, it's not like an all time great team, in my opinion. So, yes, the defending champs, but right. it's not like one of those legendary squads that just has this, this aura about them. This is unbeatable. I stayed up late. I watched the game. Um, I saw Vucevic after the game, and he goes, "We understand that we struggled at the end of the season." We understand that we we kind of limp to the finish line, but we know where we are now, and we know what kind of energy we need to put into the games and what we need to do to win. And they, they, they understand they they don't they didn't want to lose some of those games. They didn't want to play how they played, but they understood that maybe that was maybe a lesson that they needed to learn during that time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That they needed to maybe struggle a little bit, but now they're ready for the playoffs. And unfortunately, with Milton going out, that it sucks that he's he's down. But that's just a little bit more of an advantage for the Bulls. There's also it, something you, to the there's something to the point of you know a veteran team kind of just. Yeah. You know, not necessarily knowing when to flip the switch or how to flip the switch, but you can get you can see a veteran team getting complacent once they've got a playoff spot locked up. They're 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 not going up, they're not going down really from where they were. It's just like, however, the the sand was going to settle for them to get in the playoffs at that point. So it's like they you needed can see to a team get getting the complacent. playoffs. That that team yeah, was, needed to get to the playoffs. Well, they needed well, you know to what's also awesome? they had they had Patrick Williams coming back. They lost the Melo, but Paul. that's they what's had awesome because back in. So it's like. There's there's a lot of moving parts that they had to work work out there too in the last month or two. You see a guy like Patrick Williams in his first uh, NBA playoff series, he gets amazing experience. That's going to be even whatever happens in the series, that's going to be great for years to come. It'd be just really nice if he could get a whistle and, instead of Giannis on every goddamn yeah, yeah, opportunity. It's ridiculous. Okay, I don't like to be this way. No, like, I don't either, but it's out, it's out of hand. It's like, out of it's, hand. It's crazy. Because Giannis just runs into somebody, and they're going to give him a foul. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. And any time he makes contact with anybody, it's an, it's a block without question. He, may, he makes it's, contact with a guy like DeMar DeRozan, who he's probably, what, 60, 70 pounds bigger than? Oh, at least. And, and he gets a foul every single time. Yeah, it's 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 annoying as fuck. It's very annoying. Yeah. But guess, but guess what? This Bulls team has fought through it. You know, you, you guys make good points. I think that, like, when you talk about the adversity that they faced and the injuries, like, you learn a lot about your team when, you know, the chips are down and, and you're seeing guys, you know, Troy Brown, 
uh, you know, and you know, all those guys coming off the bench and getting big minutes and Javante Green and all that stuff. You know, those guys obviously we didn't like it at the time, but like those guys were getting those minutes and, and you know, you Christian take your Thompson. lumps and yeah, I mean you're gonna take those lumps, and that's this is part of the NBA season, and now because, you know the you know the moment's because, not lost on them. I, I hate to say this, but like you know what whatever you can say about Tristan Thompson, he may be whatever you see a lot in the media, but he seems like a hell of a teammate. He seems Play like yeah, he is he always excited. He's like the first guy off the bench to just get pumped up, and it, he just seems like he's having fun. Yes, that's a good way to put it. And you know I like I, mean? you I guys... don't know who like as a person, whatever. I don't really care. But like as a as a NBA player, he looks like he's having some fun. Yeah, no, for sure. And also, I thought I know like how you guys say, you know, we don't root for anybody to get injuries, and I'm not rooting no, for anybody to get no, injured not at all. But I would. Uh, I, I would root for Giannis to wake up tomorrow morning and be like four inches shorter and fifty pounds lighter. That that's the kind of injury I'd take. That is, it, it, it's unfair. No one that big should be that good. You, I understand that, but like you, you play a, a long, you play a series against a team. You play them multiple times. Uh, you you figure out like. What, what is like? How do you get that every single time to the basket? Foul. Wow. Yeah. Like he shot what twenty free throws. Yeah, it was, I don't know the exact number, but he's getting every call. I mean, he's... but uh, uh, you also look at the 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 Bulls are always like seem like they're backing up on them. Like it, yeah. it goes both ways, I guess. No, for sure. That no, was the difference for DeRozan last night too. It was just he was so he just attacked. He was an attack. Yes. The whole game. That attack there at the end. If you guys saw, you know, I, I posted a, a video on my Instagram. It was a, a video of DeMar Rosen after game one, shooting around at the uh, wherever the Bucks play at, um, shooting some free throws. And then game two, he's kind of in the same spot, making mm-hmm. those same free throws. Like it just shows you. The like, mindset that he has, yeah. yeah. And I saw um, in the interview after the game, uh, after game two, they were talking about um, shooting around. They're like, how did you get into the Buck Stadium or whatever? He goes, I'm going to be shooting around uh, between the games at the United Center too. Like this, this yeah. isn't like what I do. Like I do this all the time. Yeah, like, it's not something new for the playoffs, which is which is good. That just shows you the kind of guy he is. Um, on a light or not as good a side of things, uh, the Blackhawks five games left. Uh, Maddie, anything to look forward to in the last five here? I mean, I think we're all just kind yeah, of the end of the know, season trying to get through this. <laughs> it's one of those yeah, things. It's I... weird. Like, uh, I mean, even last year you were kind of looking at the playoffs. Like, there's just nothing to look forward I can't to. Remember I had the, to look up how many games were left. I can't remember if their first round pick is is top three or top two protected. I know there's. Why was Pat Foley's trade from, last uh, game so long ago? Like, why wouldn't his last game just be the last game? Who knows? You know what I mean? That Organizations be... upside down. It's ridiculous. That but, made no uh, sense. They, basically, they need to try to win the lottery and and hope that. But they even can with keep the lottery, like it, it, yeah, like you said, with the lottery with the NHL, like it's still up in the air. Yep, pretty much. That's about all you can. All you can hope for for him. Yeah. Now, Matt, did I see? Did I see New correctly management. that um, that Reichel is getting sent out now? Rockford is in a playoff race. Um, they're not. I believe they're yeah. just on the outside looking in. So it says Rockford clinches a playoff berth on Friday with a a Grand Rapids loss versus Chicago and a Texas loss. Uh, did Reichel get sent down in kind of the hopes of getting the Ice Hogs to the playoffs? Or is that uh, what the idea I would ass- I would assume so because you playoff, know, uh, I think he can uh, be part of the playoff, playoff roster then. But yeah, it's a playoff work. Oh, that's yeah. True. You want you want him playoff to get time. you want him to get some uh, experience as much as anything. Just keep playing, keep playing like high level hockey. That's know? gotta be fun. Yeah, I think they're on, on the outside right now. Isn't that wild though? Like if you're a uh, a, a team that's struggling or whatever, and your your AHL team is doing well. Yeah, you can just send like one of your better younger players down. It's just like, hey, here you go. Yeah, yeah. Help us make a run here. Uh, I like it though. No, 
Yeah, especially if they can fi- somehow find their way in. I mean, I'd, the more hockey that he's playing, I think is going to be better for his future. So, uh, obviously, assuming he doesn't get hurt, you know, knock on wood there. Um, yeah. But um, in another sport, uh, the Cubs, 6-7, and seven, brutal loss to the Pirates Thursday night. Um, I don't know, two weeks, we're two weeks in, guys. So it was two weeks ago, uh, Thursday. What are our takeaway? Cubs sitting right under 500. I don't know. I, what do you guys think? It's going to be a tough season pitching wise. Bullpen, starting lineup, or uh, starting rotation. It's going to be tough. I, even I love Kyle Hendricks. He's, it's going to be a, kind of maybe a struggle there. Uh, Marcus Stroman just had a uh, tough outing. Uh, Justin Steele, still young. And then you you have Leader and uh, who's the fifth starter for the uh, Cubs? Oh, Smiley. Um, yeah. It's, it's – I don't know. It's going to be tough. Like, you're going to – you're going to have to have a lot of offense going there. You know what I mean? You're going to have yeah, to – Rely on offense. Who I, I you look at the Cubs lineup and you, it's still going to be a struggle. It's, it's definitely. I think it's going to be a struggle. Yeah, I mean, I love this team. Um, Suzuki getting off to an unreal start. That but is, that is the real deal. He is the real deal. But unfortunately, this team is going to have to. They're gonna to have to provide a little bit more for the for the starting pitching because you're gonna have nights like this. But let's just let's get right to it. Mark Leiter Jr. is not a no, a, a, a not a rotation in major but league. But he's your what? He's your fifth pitcher right now. Like, where, where are you gonna go from there? I know, but still, I'm just saying. Like, no, I know they've got like. holes. It's just like, oh yeah, yeah. You, you, on either side, you're not you're not gonna get enough enough good pitching, and you're not gonna get enough good hitting. To like yeah. be a, a true threat. Now you just hope like you get enough like in waves. You know that you just get hot at certain times and certain guys are hot together at the right time, and all of a sudden you can you know ride a little bit of a wave and make a little noise, especially with some expanded playoffs and things like that. That you can at least make baseball interesting in September. I think that's ultimately the key. But you know they're going to end up hopefully dealing some of these guys at the deadline that you can maybe get some more more. Uh, pieces in return to build around and you know the, the farm system seems to be making uh progress in the right ways that you want to see so that, that's just really encouraging that's a great point man i saw uh p crow armstrong uh had a big i think he had a home run one night and a triple the next he was one of the big pieces brennan davis i think he's had two home runs in a game already don't be surprised if we see him but you know what like you guys said if you can just float while the division's down if you can, you know, tread water and you know stay competitive and not have those two week spells where you pick up, you know, I'd be one win, static with a five hundred team. Not good. Yeah, that's. I think that's realistic. What we can look at, and before we move on, at least we're not Cincinnati Reds fans. They are currently two and eleven, um, and with no signs of improvement. I mean, at two and eleven. That's your season's done. And they got they got Joey Vado's Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> TikTok. TikTok, Instagram, we got the same. No, they're very different things. Uh, no, 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 no. What I mean is, like, he just got on Instagram. Oh, I didn't see. I've I've been seeing him on TikTok all the time. So, well, I think I they're like the same thing, kind of. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they post the same things on each. I gotcha. That's I gotcha. I hey, and also, if we want, you know, misery loves company. The White Sox, six and six right now, uh, lost to the Guardians today on a little bit That's of a third skid here. Loss. Yeah, not great for the White Sox. Um, obviously, I think you can you can throw a little bit of that as to being kind of, um, you know, the the snow outs um, in the beginning of the week probably screw things up a little bit. But you know what? This team's still good. I, I still think the White Sox are, you know, a top two team in, in the American League. So, um, you know, you're going to have these weeks, but you got to get back on it. I mean, they're, they got Minnesota tonight, and you got to get back in Minnesota. So... You got to get back on that bump real quick. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a weird, a weird few days here in Cleveland. It's uh, this Guardian team is not that good. No. They went, they win game one of the the doubleheader like ten nothing or something like that, and then the second game was close. 
And then today was close too, but still like ooh, you can't be losing games like this to division teams. If you yeah, that's be, one of the things the White Sox have been be good what about. the White Sox want to be, they can't be doing this. I think I heard a stat on the radio today. The White Sox since two thousand um, are seventy one and fifty against can the I, rest of the I division. Can I be the bear bad news? I don't know if Dylan Sees is going to be what you want him to be. Uh, <laughs> and Dallas Keuchel for sure is not what yeah, you need in a World Series team. Yeah, they got to make a they, – they screwed that pitch really rotation nice up. Rode on, right? <laughs> Luis Giolito <laughs> hurt. Yeah, what did you say? Carlos Rodon. Oh, yeah. Uh, what did you say? So it would be Rodin. nice if they had Rodon. Yeah. Real nice. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, well, He's got two wins already. His ERA is 1.06. The Giants are going to be 29 watch. strikeouts. Like, yeah. Rough but you start know what I mean? It. Like that you <laughs> you don't go out and get starting pitching. Then your starting pitcher, your best starting pitcher gets hurt. Like you couldn't have had a worse start. Yeah, it's it, you got to bounce back quick. You got to come out and you got to blow the twins' doors off. You have weekend. to you have to bounce back quick, but you have to make some moves. I know it's early yeah. in the season, but you got to make something happen. Especially when your your weakness is starting pitching, like that's yes. I think that I think Matt you made a good point that Carlos Rodon pitching the whole off season and you've yeah. done nothing. Yeah, Matt, you made Carlos a really Rodon good point. Go is just mind blowing to me. So. Unbelievable. Yeah, that that will not. That, that's going to be one of those things in like fifty years. We're still going to be able to bring up and be like, remember when the White Sox didn't sign Rodon and then he went on to <laughs> you know have a Cy Young season for the Giants. Like, that'll be funny to me. Um, but, no, they got to they gotta get figured out quick as far as pitching goes. Um, but you know what, guys? Uh, I think they'll be okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. That division's also really bad. So. Long season. Long season. That's true. We're only 12 games into 162 games. So, uh, only 150 left. But before we move on, uh, I've got a big thank you to our sponsor, Connect Roasters Coffee. They have the best coffee on the Internet. They work with our guy, Dom Frederick, Ian Happ. Uh, we're starting more and more of uh, even our buddies. I got a Snapchat from one of our buddies today that he had ordered a shipment uh, down in Texas. So he's uh, getting geared up. Oh, yeah. You know, people love this coffee. It is making me a coffee guy. I actually, over spring break, tried to have a little bit of coffee every day. Still slightly working on the, they have, uh, they have the great energy drink. too. That is true. Great shirts. But even, like I said, best thing is the coffee. Best coffee around. Um, head to connectroasters.com. Follow them on Twitter at Connect Roasters. Um, you can find their products in Foxtrot Market and Dom's and some other locations coming soon. But like I said, connectroasters.com gets you loaded up. And the Home Run Club is back. So make sure that you sign up to earn some. Is it Dinger Bucks or Dinger Dollars, Zach? Is that what it is? Yes, sir. Dinger Dollars uh, when the Cubs hit home runs. So make yeah. sure. Yes, Ian App. Um, so make sure that you are checking out uh, Connect Roasters Coffee and get some of that good stuff to get your day started off. Speaking of Ian Happ and the team that Ian Happ plays for, we've got this week's pick three, and this week is Cubs logos. There's nine Cubs logos over the years, uh, so we're each going to pick our top three. Uh, I, there could be some overlap because there, I think there's one in here that has no business on anybody's list. Um, but does anybody want to go first? Can I go first? Sure. I will go first. All right. Does it have to be an order or is this just any any order? No, your your favorite three. So from three to from three to one. I'll go. I like one. I always thought one was cool. Yeah. And then I will go. I think seven is better than six. So I'm going to go seven and then eight. I think eight is the best one. I love eight. Yeah, the, the and that's the one like that's probably that most is my recognizable favorite. in our life. And I know nine maybe should be in there or whatever, and it says Cubs. But the one with the Cub coming out of it, I think that is just awesome. Yeah, I'm with you there. Maddie, do you want to go and take your three? Sure. Sure, four five nine, no doubter, absolute four five nine. answer. Four five nine. 
the I like the two retros and then the uh just the traditional number nine gives us uh you know the what what you see every day. Four is the retro look on that. Five is just the uh the throwback bear, you know. I love it all. So me and, are, me and Maddie are very opposite. <laughs> yeah, you've got a retro one on there though, number one. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, know that's the OG I, one. I, I'm just I I don't know. I'm not a fan of the cub. No, I get I'm it. I'm not a fan of the Cubs. I like the I like the like actual <laughs> Especially cub. when they lose to the Pirates. No, no. <laughs> no, no, I know. I'm just Pull me shut. Uh, <laughs> that was a good show. Piss <laughs> I off. know what you mean. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I that think was, like, that I was actually, well played, actually. That was awesome. <laughs> no, right, I go ahead. Go back. I'm going right down the middle. I'm going two five eight. Um, I I like the, two. Of, yeah, I like two. Yeah, aren't, you, aren't you a Packer fan? That looks no, no. That looks like the Cincinnati Reds. That's kind of what I like. I like the Reds logo. It looks like the Bear C. That kind of does. Maybe I don't like that. I don't know. It's it's got the the old school look to it. Five like definitely screams like the powder blue unis from the seventies that they would have that on the sleeve. Right, can we? Agree? And then what the hell is three doing there? That's three. Cool. Yeah, I what, thought that what was. Is that movie who thing. is what mascot is that? Like that. That's like a bear that's, on that's steroids. A badger. No, I think badger. that's like a a badger. Yeah, that's yeah, a honey badger. Thinking. That's a honey badger. That thing's terrifying. That thing's a fucking. That mess, thing whatever is it scary. Is. Look at the Have you guys seen? So there's a uh, an old picture. I believe it was in the uh, the 08 World Series. The Cubs actually had a mascot, and it was a white bear. And it is one of the most terrifying things. Like you see this in your nightmares. Um, and, and number three's logo is right up there with that. Um, the I don't know who came up with that, but scary. Yeah, we need to. The Cubs, if they were smart, would scrub that from the internet. Like, you need to make that thing go away. I think I chose number two because on this graphic, at least, it was the first introduction of red to the Cubs. And I love a good retro logo. And I like that they included, uh, you know, both colors into this. And I, I like one a lot. I just do, I just wanted to be a little different. Um, but, definitely but I don't know why. Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. And, and like I said, I don't hate the Reds logo at all. Uh, but Zach, I, I do think. When I think of like my, I've, I've talked about it before. My first game was opening day in '96. I want to like number seven is kind of that one that like I remember from my I childhood. I love it. Yeah, that, and, I love and I six like too. six too. I like six. Yep. And I like five. I think if you could give me five, six, seven, I love them. Yeah, I'm with you. But Matt made a good point too, and like nine is iconic. Like ever, that's oh, the one that everybody. I mean, knows. yeah, that's iconic. That's that's when you think Cubs. It says Cubs on it. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, like I said, other than three, no bad logos here. Matt, are there any other ones you would that you don't particularly like? Um, three. <laughs> well, three is terrifying. Yeah. Um, eight makes me feel bad memories of that team. Um, <laughs> that's good. That's call. fair. Hey, hey, you know what, Maddie? I uh, one time got sick eating fish. Never ate it again. I yeah, understand. seven seven's <laughs> the same. Six is what they had when I was growing up between their standard, you know, number nine. Six mm -hmm. was on like the patch though, too. And uh yeah, like so that's kind of the one I grew up on. Um, you know, like the first couple games I went to and shit. I definitely remember that one being prevalent. See, and my dad would probably say that five brings back the bad memories because that was probably, I believe, on the was it the eighty three or eighty four? No, that would have been sixty nine. That sixty nine. That um, six would have been like mid eighties to early nineties. Which, which what logo do you think would have been the one when they lost that series to the Padres? Uh, maybe not six, on here. Six and nine. Six. Okay. Maybe that's, <laughs> that would be nice. the one. He, <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> like I said, other than three, all good choices here. Uh, let's move on boys. Like we talked about a little bit earlier with the bullies. Uh, it is the NBA playoffs. One of the best times of the year. So, uh, let's jump into the Easter. Eastern Conference, uh, let's start off. Uh, what's your guys' uh, best first-round matchup going on in the Eastern Conference? Bulls. Fair. That's fair. Mine? Um, no, no, no. Mine, mine, Bulls, is, mine is the Celtics Brooklyn and Nets. Boston. Yeah, it's Brooklyn and Boston. Nets. Yep. I agree. I, I love I, – I think as of right now, though, it's, it's going to be a great series, the Bulls-Bucks. Um, the Bulls 
But net Celtics, you got like Kevin Durant, you got you got Kyrie Irving, you got Jason Tatum, you got Jalen Brown. I mean, this is just a star-studded uh series, but you have a games where they both could have gone either way. I know it's two nothing uh Celtics, but those games are close. Yeah. I just for and I agree. I think that is outside of the Bulls the best one. Um, but I do think there's I think the Philadelphia series is over already. Um but oh, I do yeah. think I mean, that three oh and that, that right. shot was insane. That MB that was insane. That was bananas but dude. I, I mean, can't believe that. Um, I do think it'll be interesting to see. I believe they play Friday night. If Atlanta can get one against Miami, I I know Miami is you know they I are with want their eyes, them but, to get one. I, I yes, I don't like Miami. I don't like. Miami. I don't either. And I also like they're good, but I don't feel like they're indestructible. You know what give I mean? Give me and Miami. I feel like if, if the Bulls win, give me my. Is, is that how that sets up? I don't know if that's how it sets up, but I would love uh, for the Bulls yeah. to play Miami. Yeah, they would. Um, but, no, I think that if, if Atlanta can get one at home, you know, and then it, I think they got a better shot at getting back in the series than the Raptors do. You know who so, the Bulls don't want to play? The Bulls don't want to play the 76ers. Actually, it would work <laughs> out that if the Bulls beat the Bucks, I believe the they would get Boston. They get Boston? You don't want them yeah. either? You yeah. Don't, I, you don't want them either. Oh, I'm no. with you. But let's see. Let's just let's let's hope we get there. Yeah, we got we got you know first round games to worry about first. Uh, <laughs> so let's be honest with ourselves, boys. Who do we think is going to face off in the Eastern Conference Finals? I think it's going to be the Celtics and the 76ers. I think that is going to is going to be uh, in the conference final. I think that's the best two teams in the league right now. Uh, I think it's going to be Miami and. Milwaukee. I don't like Miami, but I do think that Milwaukee. What? Have you yeah, seen the I, Celtics play basketball? Yeah. The Celtics are freaking amazing, Boomy. I also hate the Celtics, so I would never pick the Celtics. <laughs> so, Kevin Garnett ruined so it for me. You're so. telling me, you're telling me they could have the greatest team of all time. You wouldn't pick them. Yeah, I wouldn't. No, I, I think there's something. I don't know what it is, but Eric Spolstra does something in Miami. Um, it, I, it, I'm not counting no. them out. I really don't think. Uh, the Celtics that, are so good, though, Boomy. But they either way, Brown, the that, they have Jason Tatum. They are so freaking good. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. But also, in the same breath, like, obviously we want the Bulls to get through the Bucs, but, like, I still think the Bucs are the best team in the East. Yeah, but I know the three seed. Yeah, dude. Do you know how fair. big that is? Yeah. You know how big it is not to have. I'm not saying like before yesterday. I wouldn't. It wouldn't even have came up. But if you take Middleton away from that team, that is so big. Yeah, like that's he fair. is. I, he is a very key part of that team. I agree with Zach. I got Boston, Philly. I, and I, I don't believe the NBA reseeds in the playoffs. Pretty sure the bracket stays what it yeah. is. But hey, if the Bulls so, win, hey. they Love get it. Boston. No, if the Bulls win, they get Boston. No, what I would say is if they were, if they, if the Bulls made me wrong, I would love it. Oh, for sure. Oh, I, I just think Boston, Philly, are they're, those two teams yeah. are kind of playing at a different level right Even now. Even if the Bulls get through the Bucks, um, the the Celtics are. So so stacked right now. Or even, I mean, yeah, we talk about the Celtics, but even let's just say the Nets come back and beat the oh, Celtics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Bulls did Kevin terribly Durant, against. Kyrie Irving, two of, the, probably two of the top five players in the league right now. The Bulls um, did horrible against them this year. That doesn't scream confidence. The Bulls did horrible against them, the Heat, the Celtics. Uh, you could just shorten that down and say any team with a good record. I think it's the top four or five teams they have like a a one in fourteen record against in both the East or the West. So, um, but hey, it's the playoffs. Exactly, crazy things could happen. Um, also, I would hate to see Boston and Philadelphia, the two most annoying fan bases in the world. Um, to no you, thanks to you, Boomer. No, no, no. It's pretty. Well, I know, but. That's that would pretty, be wild. That's not they just to, to me. But you would love to see those two teams go up against each other. 
I hope they both lose in the second round. Um, let's go to the West. Best first round matchup, Maddie. Who you got? Um, Memphis, Minnesota has been a me dog too. Play. I'm with you. I'm with you. That is so much fun to watch. Yeah, it, are those teams are. It's two really entertaining teams to watch. Two good young teams. Those they're probably going to be. I don't like running Minnesota. into each other. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. They, it's both of them are just going to be around for a long saying, time. It feels I'm like. not the biggest fan of Patrick Beverly. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Towns. Uh, Edwards and that is Memphis a fucking team, monster. Oh, yeah. Edwards is Edwards is my only favorite, like only player I do like on the team. It just but it to, it, to me it's just kind of John Morant. It, I love John Morant. I agree. Uh, the problem is. With the West, it just feels like Phoenix and Golden State are on a collision course. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll, well, I'll say. Who'd you say? I'll, I'll Phoenix say, and Golden State. But what do you think of uh, Devin Booker's out? It works out perfectly that they're going to play either Dallas or Utah. But it's 1-1 series, though. They lost already once against this Pelicans team. I mean, this is going to be a series. This is going to be a series. It's not going to be the walk the walkthrough that it was, should have been, but I still think Phoenix with Aiden and yeah, Paul, I have Warriors. I have Warriors mm-hmm. Suns conference finals. Uh, Aiden and Paul is still, I think, give them more than what the Pelicans can throw at you right now. What I, what Ingram's I a monster is, though. That dude's turned into a fucking stud. What I have <laughs> to say is the Warriors, whatever they did leading up to this, they, they got away with. They they have they just. Casually brought Steph Curry back right as the playoffs started. We have Clay Thompson. We got our whole team back. Jordan Poole. Yeah, Jordan. Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole. He got he should hurt be tonight. a fucking Chicago he really? Bull. Yeah. He should be a Chicago Bull. Thank you, Guard Packs. Thank you, Guard Packs. <laughs> no, um, I, I think, uh, obviously, I think it's Sorry, very obvious. I didn't mean to be. I was just saying, Guard Packs, they fucked that up. A lot of things. <laughs> the Grizzly Timberwolves yeah, series, I would agree, cool. is clearly the best series. But like the one that's been sneaky, like the fact New Orleans went into, and I know Devin Booker's hurt, I, I but if he's it. gonna be out I the rest it, of the series, Brandon you know, Ingram. it's Brandon Ingram's like, hey, guess what, Lakers? You don't want me? Guess what? I'm gonna go to the playoffs when you're not even here. Like that is yeah. awesome. Yeah, and, and Boom, like I said, Boomy's with Booker being the, out. The Los Angeles Lakers, Boomy's favorite team. Not true. Um, <laughs> you're an idiot. Um, but, no, I think if the Pelicans, I mean, with, you got to take advantage of Booker not being there and press them, you know, and give them as much as you can. That that series has turned out way better than I expected. To, um, for them to and get I to wish one, I could, huge. Yeah, I, stealing one on the road, same thing with the Bulls. You steal yeah, one on the road, you make say, life yeah. really difficult. You know, but you know I also have been United very. Be? Oh. Um, I also thought, like, I wish I could get excited about this Dallas Utah series, but like, I can't. I don't know what it is. I don't really care for either oh, of these I, teams. You, I mean, I, you gotta. Um, if Luca was in it, it'd be a lot more exciting. But I is Utah even team. excited for this series? No, no Utah. Like Utah, Utah is so scared. overrated. Utah is so overrated. Yeah, it's, a weird I, it's so dumb. Like it makes no sense. I'm so over this Utah team. Like they're down two one to this Jazz team who doesn't even have Luca. Yeah, my Western Conference final. I'm gonna go a little bit different though. Um, I'm actually gonna. I think I'm gonna go Memphis if they can get past Minnesota here in the first round. Um, Memphis Golden State. Um, I like that as a matchup. I, I you know, it's all gonna depend on Booker. You know, if Booker's yeah, back, I mean, it, it's State. probably going to be that. They play in the second round. Oh, shoot. Yep, you're right. That's what uh, I'm so- saying with New Orleans, or with uh, the Suns. It, it works out because <laughs> I think they'll walk through Dallas or Utah personally. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's probably going to be Phoenix and – I'll go Phoenix because it would be Memphis versus Golden State. I'll go Phoenix, Memphis. I'll go the one and two. But I also worry about Memphis's, uh, you know, there's not a ton. I mean, I know they got to the, the early, I think they got to the first round last year, but like the lack of playoff experience um, against, you know, Golden State, who has a ton of it, 
is is going to be a big task. But um, either way, I think the first round matchups not looking great. A lot of two, a lot of two O's, three O's so far. But um, you know, obviously it's the NBA playoffs. So hey, mm -hmm. huge Bulls game tonight, United Center, Friday. And what was it seven thirty? I think it's like seven thirty. You gotta be tuned into this game. It's going to be so yep, much fun. Seven thirty. Bulls two and a half point dog as of right now. Um, did cute. you guys? I, did um, who did you guys say was your Western Conference predictions? I had Warriors Suns. Then Maddie, who'd you Same. have? Same. So who do you guys think is going to square off in the finals? I think it's going to be Warriors and Celtics. I actually agree. I'm. A, I'll go. Uh, Suns Bucks. We got a repeat of last year. So I don't think the Bucks Warriors. are getting past the Bulls. I don't think the Bucks are getting past the Bulls. So, Boomy, you're wrong. Mm. I'm usually <laughs> hey, not. But... Boomy will gladly be wrong, though. Absolutely, I will gladly take being wrong in in this scenario. Uh, but boys, let's wrap things up. We got the TCF not top three, and the last episode we did the best three. Major League Baseball logos uh, in current day. So now, guys, we've got to go to the worst Major League Baseball logos. Uh, Maddie, do you want to get us started? Uh, Wait, how are we gonna do this? Are we gonna just gonna do all the say all all of our three? Yeah, we've already we we. I yeah. will say this for our, I'm, this I'm is not top that. three. Peek behind the curtain. We did uh, text stars in well, uh, earlier just so we didn't we, have any. That it's for the audience, so you can see the logos. Yep, so, exactly. Maddie, so we're a little pre-planned. Maddie, you go first. I'm taking the easy one right off the top, the, the newbie, uh, the Cleveland Guardians. I yeah. feel like I, I, I might end up liking this. I like the wings on the G. I absolutely hate it. It's atrocious. There's nothing good about it. Ugly. That. The Indians wings. was way better. I understand whatever you want to say, but it was way better. Um, and then uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks, not a fan, just boring. Boo. Um, it's it's, it's oh, actually, I, I love that because that was a shun that was on Matt, Boomy's favorite. It has a <laughs> rattlesnake tongue in the middle of it, and it looks like a snake skin on the left side. This is That's Maddie's. Cool. This is Maddie's. Please do not interrupt. Keep it. <laughs> You've been interrupting all, I, all night. What are you talking about? That's all. I'm, all, I'm, positive all I'm gonna say is keep it. I don't like this one. You can have it. And then uh, lastly, I'm gonna stick with the Washington Nationals. And it was more of the yeah, the W just doesn't. Uh, so I don't curse. know. I hate it, curses. Just, I absolutely hate <laughs> curses. It's just like I, it just, I'm gonna say that. I'm just gonna say that for a fact. Curses. You know what that logo looks like? It reminds me of the team the uh in the so, sandlot that the fucking with the little asshole kid. Can I you know, can came I just, riding can up I, on their bike? Oh, like the rich snooty kids. Yeah. All right. That's what can their I, logo can looks I like. Can I just have a second here? Doesn't cursive suck? Yes. Yes. I mean, I can't read it. I mean, I feel like old people, like I have grandparents who just love cursive. Um can't read it. I hate cursive. Ooh, I don't even know. Oh. I don't like it. I didn't know you felt so passionately about cursive, Matt. Is I, it the? I'm sorry. Is it the resemblance like to the Sandlot logo, or is it just the boring like Walgreens font? It's just that's... basic. I don't know. It's, just, it's gross. I don't All like right, it. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go next. Talking. Is that okay? Of course. I will go next. Let's see here. All right. First of all, we all hate this one. Yuck, the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. Um, but like objectively, like if it wasn't the team we hated, we I I could yeah. see myself not hating that logo. But I mean, the, it's a yeah, bird on a bat. It's suck. pretty cool. The Cardinals suck. The Cardinals suck. This, I absolutely oh God, hate that's, this logo. That's such a Absolute, bad. That's a good logo. That's an absolutely bad uh. logo. The mascot's got a baseball for a head. I do not like it. Maddie, am I, I wrong? actually like the Reds one. Okay, that's fine. I have haters. This, <laughs> I hate this logo. You chose this the wrong logo for the Rays. That's a great logo. That is a great logo, actually. 
You, um, you should have chose the new the one. Wrong one. But I had to pick one that like, <laughs> okay, they're like files. Like the files, the, the the things weren't working. None of the other ones were going in. I'm sorry. This isn't the one I would, would hate, but I don't like the double raise ones now. There's two basic. This one. Zex. This one kind of hits. Some people are going to see your list and be like, wow, this is like my top three. This one is not great. Yes, it is. This one. No, it's not. That is I a like hate that, that mascot. I hate that mascot. I, this one I, I objectively think disgusting. This no, one, I think I'd puke. I could puke if we, against this one. If we took ourselves out of being Cubs fans, I could like the Cardinals mascot. See, that's just you trying to say it's that not you a like bad it. logo. That is you trying to say that you like it. You're a moron. That I'm is saying. not what I'm saying. That's you're what you're idiot. saying. You're going. I you're like it, but I, I, I'm not a fan. No, if it was like if the, if that was the same logo, if they were the Toronto Cardinals and they weren't in our division and we haven't hated them forever, then I, you would like that logo. All right, boom, I guarantee up. it. All right, my three that I dislike first and foremost, I got to go with the Marlins. This new logo is an abomination. Um, they had it so good with the cur- the big F with the Marlin jumping the fish over it, is and so they ugly. completely ruined it. That Marlin is disgusting. It's got no character. Like yeah, this it, is boring. It's, it's just like it's too much. This screams Derek Jeter doing too much uh, and ruining. He's the gone front though. Office. He's not there anymore. I know. I know. He did his number in there. My second one I'm going to go with um, is the Minnesota Twins. Or no, yes, I'm sorry. I do have the Twins. Um, Looks very Nationals like. That's Matt. When you had the Nationals one pop up, that was exactly what I thought. And like <laughs> the 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 Twins logo, like the TC, the intertwining on the hat, that's a good one. But this is just very generically boring to me. The Twins script alone is is fine. Yes, I agree. Like because I like, like their just, unis with the pinstripe. It's it's a nice uni. Yes, I couldn't agree more. But like they, they somehow ruined this logo. I don't know yeah, how they the managed circle, that. The circle and the base was it's an it's unnecessary ad. Right. Just be, just have your, your twins and throw a TC behind it if you want. Knock yourself out. My last one, I've never understood the love of this one, the Dodgers logo. This is boring. This is, I, <laughs> I, I know, know it's classic. I didn't mean for this to show up like this. It's kind of cool. But, but it's more cursive. Cursive sucks. Yeah, that, We're done with cursive. That's fair. I, I don't know. Matt, am I wrong here or is this just boring? No, I like that one. Do you? Yeah. What do you Yeah, know? I like it. it it's, it's got <laughs> – it, I don't know. It's got a little bit of entertainment. It's got like a rocket ball going off. Like, I don't know. I can get behind it. This I, – I don't know. I feel like there's just something extra that they couldn't – That's my only gripe with it. Um, but let us know what your uh, bottom MLB logos in baseball are. Um, but, boys, that was episode 113 of Typical Chicago Fans. Make sure you head to connectroasters.com or follow Connect Roasters at Connect Roasters on Twitter for some great coffee products. Uh, get yourself going in the morning with Connect Roasters. Uh, Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Give those pages a like on YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube page, follow our content in video form. Wherever you get your podcasts, uh, give us a follow there. Uh, If you can leave a uh, rate or a review, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, Wherever you you find them, you got to do what you got to do. All right. Um, You can find us on Twitter. At typical underscore Chicago. Zach is at Z Lilia TCF. Maddie is at schools underscore zero one. And I am at Boomy TCF. Again, that was episode 113 of typical Chicago fans. We love you all. Peace.